According to almost all international reports on religious liberty, China holds the world record for violations of religious liberty and persecution of religious believers. In China, only five religions whose leaders are appointed by the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, and which are strictly controlled by the government can operate freely, although they too are subject to limitations. Sociologists call this the red market of religion. Millions of believers are part of a gray market, which includes thousands of Protestant house churches. With a new law that came into force on February 1, 2018, President Xi Jinping vowed to destroy this gray market, compelling most house churches to join the official Protestant Three Self Church and persecuting the others. President Xi also promoted a crackdown on Muslims, Buddhists, and others not part of the official red market. Scholars believe that one and a half million religious believers are detained in the dreaded transformation through education camps, in fact, concentration camps where people are submitted to heavy labor and indoctrination regimes are tortured and die. One million of them are Uyghur Muslims. But there are believers in China persecuted even more heavily than those in the gray market. They are part of the black market of the religions included in the list of Xiaotao, periodically updated by the authorities. The CCP translates Xiaotao as evil cults to elicit the sympathy of those concerned with cults in other countries. However, this translation is misleading. Xiaotao means heterodox teachings, and lists of Xiaotao have been compiled since the late Ming period. The Chinese emperor decided what religious teachings were heterodox based on his own judgment. Xia Chao were banned and their members hunted, tortured, and killed. In practice, the Chinese emperor listed or did not list a group as Xia Chao largely based on political evaluations. Christianity as a whole was listed as Xia Chao in 1725, but went out of the list in 1842 because of Western military pressure. The CCP, as the new emperor, has continued this practice, but it has given it a modern legal framework. Article 300 of the Chinese Criminal Code punishes using a Xia Chao with a three to seven years jail penalty or more. Case law shows that using a Xia Chao means being active in any capacity in a group listed as a Xia Chao, being a leader is not necessary, and even having been found in possession of literature of a Xia Chao is enough to go to jail. As it happened in the Chinese Empire, definitions of Xia Chao are vague. For all practical purposes, a group is a Xia Chao if the CCP has included it in its list of Xia Chao. Meanwhile, a violent demonstration took place in front of the sole premises of the Church of Almighty God at Onsu. For a fortunate coincidence, believers would call it divine providence, Mr. Peter Zoher, an Austrian journalist and the secretary of FOREF, Forum for Religious Freedom Europe, was attending a conference in Seoul. Informed of the planned demonstrations, he decided to visit the Church of Almighty God in Seoul to collect testimonies of torture in China and was an eyewitness to the events. On September 2nd at 1230 noon, Ms. O oh brought to the Church of Almighty God's premises seven relatives of church members and the small group of anti-cult activists, as well as about a dozen of paid professional demonstrators. A group of men raised four banners across the entrance of the building. At approximately 1 p.m., 30 individuals appeared at the Ansu Church entrance in succession to participate in the demonstration and used megaphones and speakers to loudly insult and abuse both the Church of Almighty God and the person it worships as Almighty God. According to witnesses who had been on the scene, the decibel level of the demonstration was an assault on the senses, making people feel unwell, and it was above the legal noise limit. Furthermore, the clamoring and shouting greatly disturbed the activities of the populace in the area and affected the Sunday services of the local Christian churches as well. Holding their loudspeakers in hand with an emotional tone, the professional demonstrators shouted and asked the church members to come out and to meet their relatives, with sentences such as, Mom is missing you, please come out and meet me, and so on. They tried to create the false impression that the Church of Almighty God stops its members from seeing their relatives. As mentioned earlier, the contrary was true. 
Church members did not react to the provocation. They only exposed a banner with the appeal of the nine NGOs. The demonstration lasted for five and a half hours. The demonstrators shouting their slogans with the most fervor were two or three Koreans, not the Chinese nationals who had come to visit family members. Peter Zarr later reported that there were more people from the media than there were demonstrators. At 3 p.m., a vehicle that had left to run errands returned to the Ansu Church. As the vehicle pulled up to the entrance, Ms. O oh instructed the demonstrators on the scene, block the car, block the car. Then she waved her hands, asking all the relatives to come around, and one of the paid professional demonstrators immediately lied down on the ground in front of the car, holding a loudspeaker to yell, followed by some others. And in response, more than 10 demonstrators surrounded the vehicle from all sides, and they beat at the car's windows with all of their strength to force the person inside to open them. Then demonstrators proceeded to take out cameras and take pictures of the inside of the vehicle as it remained still, blocked from moving forward or backward. Ms. O oh even viciously kicked at the vehicle multiple times, and she was inciting others to fiercely trample on the car. Finally, before allowing the vehicle to pull into the church, Ms. O oh demanded that the driver roll down the windows so that more than 10 demonstrators could look in, one by one, and see who the persons inside were. Luckily, Mr. Zorer was able to film the process. The deadlock lasted for almost half an hour, and at last, the car was able to move to the parking lot. Mr. Zorer was protected by his being a foreigner and showing his card as a journalist, but the church members had to be escorted by the police. That afternoon, Mr. Peter Zorer once again went to the Ansu Church of Almighty God to have interviews with the church members whose relatives had come to South Korea to seek for relatives. These members spoke out their stories of how they fled to South Korea to escape persecution in China due to their belief in Almighty God. They felt very indignant and worried about the fact that their relatives were obviously deceived and used by the CCP. Their relatives, they said, came to South Korea just to cooperate with the CCP to create trouble for the church. On September 4, 2018, at 10 a.m., thanks to the mediation of the police, Ms. O oh and her colleagues had to allow the church members to meet their relatives. As they reported to Peter Zor after the meeting, the refugees explained to their relatives that it was their own free decision to flee to South Korea, where they can practice their religion openly because of the Chinese communist regime's inhumane persecution of their religion in China, and that they are totally free to come and go from the church's premises as they please. When in turn, the church members asked their relatives questions, for instance, who told them they were held against their will by the church, why the relatives came to Korea now and who brought them there and paid for their tickets and so on, they just dodged the questions. At the same time, Miss O oh kept making trouble outside the premises of the church under the pretext of seeking for relatives. On September 4th, 2018, at 1.15 p.m., led by Ms. O, oh, about 20 demonstrators drove to the Church of Almighty God's worship building located at Chongqianbokdo in Seoul. They hung up banners along the roadsides in front of the church building and got ready for another demonstration against the Church of Almighty God. Simultaneously, KBS, the leading Korean TV network, and the Christian TV CBS were also on site to follow up and report the demonstration. Unlike the one in Ansu on September 2nd, this demonstration was not attended by any Chinese relative of the asylum seekers because they were meeting with the refugees at the time. As reported by Peter Zeller, the demonstrators violated Korean law in at least four counts, which was a mistake on their part and led to the demonstration ending in disgrace. First, Zor said the demonstration was officially registered from 2 o'clock p.m. until 4 o'clock p.m. But already at 1.45 p.m., they arrived and started to chant and scream through their loudspeakers turned on maximum volume. That was their first mistake. Their second mistake was to exceed the legal limitation of demonstration, trespassing on the premises of the Church of Almighty God to stage the demonstration and they even raised banners to cover the banner with the appeal of the nine NGOs that the church had exposed. Their third mistake was to park their pickup truck illegally within the private premises of the Church of Almighty God. 
And the fourth mistake was not to back up from these illegal activities once they had been requested to do so by a lawyer representing the Church of Almighty God. At 1.48 p.m., a middle-aged demonstrator jumped into the rear of a truck and yelled, while some others echoed his shouting with sporadic words. During the time, Ms. O walked up to the man and kept whispering to him. Then the man took out a prepared paper and shouted out the texts. Shortly after the demonstration had begun, others came in a vehicle and joined the demonstrators. The women among them were in headscarves, while the men were of tanned skin. They didn't look like they were Korean. The police officers asked why they were there, and they answered they were called to come, but they didn't know what to do next. The police told them that a demonstration was in progress there and that they'd better leave. They all left quickly. At 1.53 p.m., a lawyer representing the Church of Almighty God went out of the building to remind the demonstrators that they had crossed the legal limitations of their demonstration and trespassed on the premises of the church. He requested the demonstrators to move away their truck that was parked in front of the church building together with their banners. The leading demonstrator became hysterical and began to yell. He refused to move the truck under the pretext of not having the key and angrily confronted the lawyer. Having no choice, the church members had to call the police to solve the problem. A few minutes later, the police arrived to deal with those demonstrators and asked them to leave. At 2.21 p.m., Miss O and her people had to move away their truck and banners. The demonstrators marched to the west. At that time, only a handful of demonstrators remained in front of the church building, and they were scattered along the roadside opposite it. The entire demonstration had lasted only a half an hour and ended in failure. At 2.50 p.m., Peter Zor appeared at the entrance of the worship building. KBS, CBS, and other TV stations asked to interview him. Ms. O oh saw the reporters invited by her surround Mr. Zor for the interview and soon packed up and left. The presence of a foreign journalist was not part of her or the CCP's plans. At 3 p.m., the reporter and the producer of KBS Xiang Zhu conducted an in-depth interview with Mr. Zor at the security office of the worship building. The reporter raised questions such as whether the Church of Almighty God is persecuted in China, whether its members fled to South Korea because of the persecution, and what Mr. Zor knows about the human rights situation of the refugees. Mr. Zor explained that nobody can seriously dispute that the Church of Almighty God is persecuted in China and that its members fled to South Korea to escape persecution, yet their families were disrupted. But this was the fault of the CCP rather than that of the Church. When he asked about how he learned about the persecution of the Church of Almighty God, Mr. Zor replied that he learned it through his studying the Church for more than a year. He also mentioned that during his personal interviews with several church members, he found their persecution stories very credible. He also explained that church members are preparing affidavits about the abuse and torture they suffered in China. Mr. Zor also mentioned the leaked internal document from CCP published by Bitter Winter on how to conduct demonstrations against refugees in South Korea and how this script was faithfully executed by Ms. O. Oh. He added that, as an eyewitness to the events, it was pretty obvious to him that most demonstrators were hired thugs with no knowledge whatsoever of the Church of Almighty God. Zorer concluded, The very foundation of America is actually uh, the seeking religious freedom, because they, they could not uh, have religious freedom in, in Europe. They, they went all the way to America. This is the foundation of America. This is why, especially in America, they never forget to reach this freedom. This is like a holy right for the Americans. And, uh, uh, you know, this is no different. You know, no different. They come here uh, under very difficult circumstances uh, for, for the sake of finding freedom, religious freedom, finding their human rights. The entire interview lasted for an hour and a half. Parts of it were later aired by the KBS, together with footage of the demonstrations and of Ms. O oh reiterating her claims. 